So welcome to Mindset Tools Mastery. I'm really excited um, about this opportunity to talk with you today. And wanted to uh, go over what we're gonna do today and um, then let you know a little bit about the format. And we'll be talking about um, why we're doing this and what to expect going forward. So uh, many of you know that we have recently launched the Mindset Tools Practice Groups. And the reason that we decided to, to begin offering that is that in the work that I do with my clients and talking to them about how they've been able to make the progress that they've made and what they found most valuable in our work together, one theme that, that kept coming up over and over again is the tools that I teach have been really helpful to them. Now, we also know that there's a difference between knowing what the tools are and actually being good at using the tools. And so that's where the idea about having practice groups um, came up. So the idea of the practice groups is that we're gonna take one tool at a time and give people an opportunity to, to practice them. And so the, the way the practice groups are designed is that uh, we have the, the platform that we're using. And so participants will sign into that website and then they'll have one tool that they're gonna be focusing on. And over the course of two weeks, uh, each day as they sign into the website, um, they'll get instructions about practicing that tool. And then they're asked to, um, to report what their experience was, to, to make, create a post about what their experience was. And then also to comment on the posts that other participants in the group uh, have made. In doing so, they're sharing their experience. They're both offering support and receiving support from the other uh, participants. And then they're also getting feedback from me or one of the other coaches. And so the idea is that as they're practicing this every day over a period of two weeks, that they are able to get better at using that particular tool. Now there's more than 20 different tools that I teach um, in the work that I do with people. And so as we're building these out, at the end of the two weeks uh, period, a person could choose to repeat that particular tool because they want to get even better at it, or they could choose from one of the other tools that we're offering. And the format's always going to be the same. Two week period, uh, do the same set of exercises every day, um, report their experience, uh, comment, and then receive feedback. So that's why we're doing the, uh, the tools uh, and, and the practice groups the way that we have them set up. And when you know people uh, ask me and talk to me about the, the mindset tools themselves and uh, how they've um, come about, you know, I've been working as a, a, a therapist in private practice for uh, 18 years now, and been in the helping profession for more than 30 years. And so these are tools that I've picked up along the way, either because other other teachers or mentors have shared them with me or they're tools that I've just developed in, in my work with people, helping them to figure out works, what works best for them. And I, I've really been blessed in the time that I've done this work because what I find is that as I'm talking with my clients and trying to help them to figure out how to make their lives better, that has a positive impact on me as well. And so there are tools that I am asking my, my clients to use, but I've also got benefit um, from them myself. And, and that's how they, they end up getting refined over time. So that's, that's what, what the tools are and why we've set up the practice groups. So we wanna talk about um, um, a little bit more about what the tools are and then how you can benefit uh, from them in your own life. So when my client said um, it's the tools and knowing that we wanna be um, able to get good at them and not just know what they are, then we need to have a, a way to practice them but then the, then the question is, okay, but what is it that we're actually practicing? And, and like, is there, is there a model for what we're doing? And so the, the model is that we know that, that the reason that people come to, to see me is because um, there's some aspect in, uh, of their life that they're not satisfied with. They're, there's something that's not going the way they would like it to go. And so I ask my, my clients to think about that in terms of the results that they're getting. And it's always the case that my clients are wanting a different result. And so then I help them to think about, okay, well, where do our results actually come from? And they can recognize that 
we get results from the action that we take. And so then it's helpful to, to look at, okay, well, what's driving our action? What, what determines whether we take uh, action or not? And so you can think about your own life. And there may be times that um, you know that it would be helpful for you to do something, but you can't get yourself to do it. Or you may find that there are things that, that you know are probably not helpful or are actually getting in the way, but you find yourself engaging in those things anyways. So part of what we're talking about is how do we manage our behavior to be able to get the results that we want? Well, to manage our behavior, it's helpful to think about, well, what's actually driving that behavior? And so as I try to help uh, clients to understand that, what I, the al analogy that I often use is think about like playing a basketball game. And imagine that you were in, in the game and you got hit upside the head. How would you feel about that? Well, many people would tell me that they would be upset about that. And I said, okay, well, imagine that happened to you 10 times in the same game. Can you imagine getting so upset that at some point you swing back or you walk off the courts? Yeah, so what you're doing in that moment is related to the, the emotional state that you're experiencing. So imagine the 10th time that you've been fouled, the ref finally blows the whistle and says, you're gonna go shoot free throws. If you're already across the threshold uh, in terms of how upset you are, you're not going to go shoot free throws. You're either going to swing back or you're going to walk off the court. So what you do in that moment is determined by how you're feeling. So how we're feeling is, is driving the behavior that we're taking. But also imagine that you are, uh, the, the ref blows the whistle and you decide that you're gonna to go uh, to the free throw line, you're getting ready to make the free throws, but your experience is you're still so upset at being fouled 10 times. How well are you gonna do making those free throws? Probably not well at all. And so not only is our emotional state determining what behavior we're taking, but our emotional state is also determining the quality of the behavior that, that we're taking. I was uh, earlier today, I was working with a client and, and she was, the, the result that she wants to get is good grades and, and the behavior is, you know, making sure that, that she does her homework. But she knows that there are times that she tries to do her homework when she's not particularly motivated. Well, if she's trying to do her homework and she's not motivated, it's, it's just not going to go well. It's going to take her longer. It's going to be more, more difficult, more painful. So if we, we can get into the right emotional state, then it, it, again, makes it easier to engage in the behavior and the quality of behavior is gonna be better. So some of my clients aren't students, some of them are, uh, are parents. And so what kinds of things are, might they be trying to accomplish? Well, maybe the, the result that they want is to have a really satisfying family life, or maybe what they want is for um, a good future for their kids. And so the, the, the behavior is, is related to parenting, okay? Well, I know myself as a parent, and when I'm frustrated, I often will say things that are not helpful, you know, or if I'm uh, distracted because I'm, I'm trying to work and, and my son needs something, you know, I'm not in the right emotional state that, that's going to have that interaction um, go well. So if we can manage our emotional states, then we're much more likely to engage in the behavior that's going to get us the result that we want. And we're more likely to have that behavior go as well as it can go, the quality is gonna be much better. So again, our results are determined by the behavior that we're engaging in. And the behavior that we engage in is coming from our emotional states. So if we know emotional states are driving behavior, behavior is getting results, then we can ask ourselves, okay, well, what determines the emotion, excuse me, the emotional states that, that we experience? Where does that come from? Well, our emotional states are a combination of what's going on with their thinking and what's going on with our physiology. Now, some people that I know, some uh, writers and, and some speakers, focus very heavily on the thinking part of that. And a lot of what we're going to talk about is the thinking part of that. But, but it's important to recognize that our thinking, our emotional states, our behavior is all happening with the, within the context of our body. And so if we're not paying attention to what's going on with our body, we can be trying to set things up in the right way and still not get the results that we're looking for. Uh, as an example, just think about something like what we eat. 
um, we can eat things that um, give us energy. Some, sometimes we eat things that give us you know, a quick burst of energy, but then may actually deplete our energy um, over time. Or we can eat things that help us to have sustained energy. And uh, if we have sustained energy, we're more likely to get the results that we want. Okay, so that's a, a question of what are we, we, we eating? But we can also look at um, how much we eat. So think about eating a large Thanksgiving type meal. Okay, how do you feel a half an hour to an hour afterwards? Motivated or lethargic? Lethargic, right? And no thinking is required. We just are more lethargic. Or think about how you might feel if you haven't gotten enough sleep, right? you might be more irritable. Again, no thinking is required, we just are more irritable, right? So we're going to talk about our thinking and how that's setting up our emotional states. But again, it's important to remember that all of this is happening in the context of our body, and so it's important for us to pay attention to what's going on with our body. So what's uh, setting up our emotional states is our thinking and our physiology. That is so true that if we make a big enough change in our thinking or our physiology or both, we literally can't stay in the same emotional state. So let me give you examples of what I mean by that. So oftentimes I'm working with, with clients that are experiencing a lot of stress or anxiety. So oftentimes I'll, I'll say to them, you know, imagine a, a time when you got really stressed out or really anxious. And imagine yourself in that situation and right at the peak of that stress or anxiety, you fall into an ice cold pool. You know that sensation, <gasps> right? In that moment, your stress or anxiety would be gone instantly, right? Because of what's going on with your body. Or imagine that you're right at the peak of that stress or anxiety and a fire breaks out and you need to get the people that you care about out of the building. Again, your, your stress or anxiety about whatever was going on would vanish instantly as you're uh, move into action to, to take care of the people that are important to you, right? So the pool represents a significant change in our physiology. The fire represents a significant change in our thinking. If we can make a big enough change in our thinking or our physiology or both, our emotional state literally can't stay the same. So those are always going to be the two components of our emotional states, right? And so if we can get our thinking into a productive place, that's going to elicit the emotional state that we want to be in, as long as our body is supporting that. And that's going to, and those emotional states are going to drive the behavior and the behavior is going to get us the results that we want. So that's the model. Our thinking is driving our feeling, our feeling is uh, driving our behavior. All of that is happening within the context of our body. And that's what determines whether or not we get the results that we want. So when we're talking about mindset tools, the focus is on what's going on with our thinking, and can we align our thinking with the uh, results that we want? I was just listening to uh, one of my mentors, and uh, she, she said this in a very interesting way uh, that I thought really would, was helpful for me as well as many of the clients that I'm working with right now. Um, she in, was encouraging um, her students to think about it in this way, that our results come more from our thinking than from our behavior. Now, that, that's sort of a, an interesting comment, given that we said that it's the behavior that get us the results. So what's she talking about there? Well, what she was saying is that if we are engaged in the thinking that is aligned with the result, let's say there, there is a result that I want, like um, you know, creating these programs, right? And I'm saying to myself, um, I can create these programs. I know that it's possible. Like I'm 100% convinced that it's possible for me to do this, right? So if that's where my thinking is and I try something and it doesn't work, that's okay. I'm just going to go on to the next thing and I'm going to go on the next thing and I'm going to keep going until I find what works, right? So that's what she was trying, trying to establish. So when we get stuck, if we can direct our focus to our thinking rather than our behavior, we're much more likely to end up with the results that we want. Now, um, many of you will be able to, to relate to this. If you think about an example like weight loss, you know, think about 
uh, people who find themselves in a situation where they've decided they, they want to lose weight. How does that get set up? Well, oftentimes it's a situation where, you know, somebody gets on a scale, they look down, they see a number that's larger than they want it to be. And in that moment, they feel something, right? Like a sense of urgency. I need to do something about this. I need to do something about it right now. And what happens in that situation is then their mind shifts to what to do. And so they're going to come up with their diet strategy. Like I'm not going to eat any more carbohydrates or I'm not going to eat any more sweets or whatever the, the diet plan happens to be. Okay. Well, then what happens? So now imagine that it's an hour later, they're hungry. They're standing in their kitchen surrounded by sweets and carbohydrates. What happens to the decision they made an hour ago? It goes out the door, right? Because they're not in that same emotional state. They're not uh, in that same sense of urgency. Well, imagine instead that while they were standing on that scale, looking down, seeing a number that was larger than they wanted it to be, they said to themselves, how do I maintain this sense of urgency? So an hour later, they're standing in their, their kitchen. They're surrounded by sweets and carbohydrates, but they're still feeling that sense of urgency. Their mind would figure out what to eat and what not to eat with very little effort, right? So when we're getting stuck, it's what we want to focus on is rather than the behavior, what am I going to do or not do? We want to focus on what's our mindset. If we can set up our mindset in the right way, we're going to get the results that, that we're looking for. And that's really why we're, we're so interested in the mindset tools and helping people not just to know them, but to actually get good at them. Okay, so when we are working on this, I want you to think about how you can use mindset tools, even if you're not exactly sure what all the mindset tools are yet, I want you to think about how you could use mindset tools um, yourself. And so the way that I want you to do this is I want you to think about one area of your life where you would like to get a better result. And it can be anything that is important to you. And I'm going to give you just a few moments to think about that. What's one area of your life where you would like to get a better result? Okay, now think about this. So I asked you to think about your uh, life and an area of improvement. Does it make sense to you that no matter where we are, no matter what's going on in our life, there's always room for improvement? One of the ideas that, that I like to work with is that my work helps my clients to become a better version of themselves. The reason that's so important is that um, you are the only one who can be you. There isn't anybody else in all of human history who can be you. And so as you become a better version of yourself, that's good not only for you, but for the people who are around you and really for all of us. So for me, it's important that my work helps people to become a better version of themselves. And again, no matter where we are, no matter what's going on with ourselves, there's always room for improvement. And so these mindset tools that we're talking about can be used to help us to get those results that are important to us. So I ask you to, to identify that so you can be thinking about that area of improvement as um, we continue to, to talk about how to use the mindset tools. So think about that area of improvement and ask yourself, are you feeling stuck with that? Or do you feel like you're getting good results in that area of improvement? If you're getting good results, then it's likely that you are operating consistently with that model that I just laid out for you, whether you know you're doing it or not. If you're getting good results, then your mindset is aligned with that result. That mindset is driving your emotional states. The emotional states are driving the behavior and you're getting the results that you're looking for. If you're feeling stuck, then there's a breakdown somewhere in that model. I was talking with a, a client just yesterday and, and he was uh, really stuck. And one of the comments that he made to me as we were talking about this model is he said, you know, it, it, it seems to me almost like I'm being blamed 
for the emotional states that I'm experiencing and the results that I'm getting, right? And, and that was uncomfortable for him. It's like, you know, if, if the emotional states are because of his thinking and, you know, his, his experience was that he was being blamed for his thinking. And so the, the analogy that I used uh, with him was, you know, to, to imagine him being stuck kind of like being in a prison cell, right? Where it is, uh, you know, that, that's a very unpleasant, distressing situation to be in. And I asked him to, you know, think about what it would be like if the keys to the cell were outside the cell, right? Well, if they're outside the cell, if he can't reach the keys, then there isn't anything that he can do about that and he stays stuck. But what if the keys are inside the cell, right? Then he recognizes that there's something that he can do to get himself unstuck. Whether you are in the cell because of the choices that you've made or not isn't as important as what are you gonna do at this point, right? There isn't anything that we can do about the choices that we made yesterday or even the choices that we made five minutes ago. But there's a lot that we can do about the choices that we're making now and the choices that we're making going into the future. So if you recognize and take responsibility for your thinking, we can do that without beating ourselves up, right? We can say, I was thinking that way yesterday because that was what was going on with me yesterday. Yesterday, I was doing the best that I could with what I had to work with, and that's the results that I got but today isn't yesterday, right? The, the future is not the same thing as the past. Sometimes when, when people work with the idea of acceptance, the, the, um, the concept is to accept that it is what it is. You've probably heard that phrase, it is what it is. So can I accept that it is what it is? And the reason that that's an important concept is that it is what it is, meaning that it's not going to change. It, it, as much as I want it to be different, in this moment, it's not going to be different. And so that's why accepting that it is what it is is so important. But where some people get stuck is that accepting that it is what it is is not the same thing as accepting that it will be what it is. And so it's that future that gives us the opportunity for the growth, the opportunity to do something different. And so that's why we're focusing on the mindset uh, tools and recognizing that if we take responsibility for our mindset, we set ourselves up to get better results. So when you think about the result that you identified, I want you to think about it in terms of like what category of your life is this in? And I'm just gonna mention some briefly. The result that you want might be related to your work or your career, it might be related to your financial situation. It might be related to relationships that are important to you. It could be um, you know, a spouse or a partner. It could be um, a, a child or your children. It could be extended family, coworkers or friends. Maybe the area of improvement is related to your health. It could be related to uh, your diet, what you're eating or how much you're eating, your weight. It could be related to um, some kind of physical illness. It could be related to um, fatigue, not having as much energy as you would like. It could also be related to your emotional health, right? All of those um, are, you know, in the category of health. Another category would be spirituality. Um, might be like, do I have a sense of purpose in my life? Do I have a, a connection with um, a higher being, with God, or something beyond myself that is satisfying to me? Your area of improvement could be um, related to growth or contribution. Um, I've been given a lot. Am I giving back? Am I uh, making the, the community that I, that I live in or the global community better by, uh, by my life, by what I'm choosing to do? Uh, am I giving of my time um, to, to uh, things that I think are important? Am I giving my, my, my talent, my ability? Am I giving my treasure? Am I, am I supporting causes that I think are, are important? And so am I growing? Am I contributing? Another area might be rec recreation, right? Am I taking enough time to recharge so that I've got more to give? Um, am I allowing myself 
to enjoy the, the things that I'm doing. So the area of, of improvement that you identified can be related to, to one or more of those categories. And so if you think about that, those categories are things that, that many people are um, interested in, they're important to them, and as life gets better in any one of those areas, our life overall gets better. And so earlier when I was talking about being a better version of ourselves, that's good for us, it's good for the people around us, it's good for the things that are important to us, and it can be related to any one or more of those categories. So this thing that you've identified that's important to you, it's gonna be related to one of those categories, it can help you to become a better version of yourself. And the mindset tools that we teach in this program are uh, designed to be able to help you get those results that, that you're looking for. So that's a, an introduction to the mindset tools. And so what we're going to do in subsequent weeks is we're gonna take one tool at a time and I'm going to explain what the tool is, how to use the tools, give you examples of that tool, and then you'll have an opportunity if you choose to participate to ask questions about that to help to clarify in your own mind um, what the tool is, it is. And then there's you'll always have an opportunity to join one of the practice groups. Our plan is to have a practice group related to each tool starting every Monday. So even though the, the practice group is going to go for a period of two weeks, there'll be a new one starting every Monday. So there'll be some overlap in the groups. Um, but then you'll have a choice of what tools you want to participate in and tools that you want to practice so that you can get better at them to be able to get the results that you want. So that's the presentation.